they set up camp closer to the town in some of the houses than Paul had anticipated. He had imagined that field training would be off in a remote area. I think they're wanting to make it fit real situations as much as possible, Leroy said when Paul mentioned it. If we go to war, I'm sure we'll be fighting in and around some towns as well as out in the open. Makes sense, I guess, Paul agreed. And the good news is, we can visit anywhere within our camp confines, so maybe we can rustle up some home-cooked meals at some of the nearby houses. Paul couldn't believe Leroy's audacity. So you're just going to waltz right up and invite yourself to dine with them? Leroy snorted. This is the South. I'm going to just waltz right up, and they're going to invite us in to eat with them. Surely you've heard of Southern hospitality? Leroy pantomimed it all with exaggerated gestures. Paul shook his head at Leroy's expressive antics. However, Leroy was probably right about the offers. But would it be right to take advantage of their hospitality? Come on, Leroy motioned to Paul the next afternoon. I've got something I want to show you. It had been a busy day of scouting around and getting organized, and Paul wanted some quiet time to process it all. What is it? Come on, Leroy repeated. I'll explain on the way. Well? Paul asked when Leroy didn't say anything as he led Paul out from the main part of their camp. I met Bruce Honeycutt, and he invited us to supper. Paul stopped in his tracks. I don't know about this. Come on now. Leroy had begun to sound like a stuck phonograph. Didn't you hear the captain? We can go anywhere in or near the town as long as we aren't on duty. Paul gave up and resumed following Leroy. He had learned that it took less effort to just go along with the man than try to persuade him otherwise. Maybe a good meal would give him some extra energy, and he could do his thinking whenever things settled down tonight. The Honeycutt place turned out to be a neat white house with a wraparound porch on two sides. Some fall flowers still added color to the front, attesting to a female touch. How many people are in this family? Paul asked Leroy as they started up the steps to the front porch. I'm not sure. I didn't ask. But the glint in Leroy's eyes said he knew more than he wanted to tell. A pretty girl who looked to be in her teens answered the door. Come in. Daddy said to expect you. He's in the living room. The delicious aromas hit Paul in the face as soon as he walked through the door. They enticed his nose and caused his stomach to yearn for satisfaction. She led them down a hall and into where Mr. Honeycutt sat reading the newspaper. He put down the paper and stood. Welcome. Come in, have a seat, and make yourself at home. When they sat down, Mr. Honeycutt did also. Supper will be ready in just a few minutes, the young woman said as she left, presumably to go to the kitchen. That was Irene, my middle daughter. Mr. Honeycutt looked at Paul. I've met Leroy, and you must be the friend he told me about. Yes, sir. I'm Paul Martin. Mr. Honeycutt smiled at him. Nice to meet you, Paul. Do I detect a northern accent? Yes, sir. I'm from Philadelphia. How do you like the South? Paul didn't know quite what to say. I haven't been here long, sir. I spent a little over a week with Leroy in Tennessee, and have only been in Oakboro for one full day. Ha, see. Mr. Honeycutt laughed as if he knew he'd been diplomatically diverted from a direct answer. Well, I hope you grow to love it. Supper's ready. Another teenager stood in the doorway, and she looked a little older than the first one. This one took Paul's breath. Her light brown or dark blonde hair reminded him of honey improved a good contrast to her dark eyes. Most unusual, her skin reminded him of fine china, porcelain, or alabaster, an archaic concept but the only way his mind could describe it. Her lips were full and, well, kissable. She wasn't a beauty in the usual sense of the word, but Paul had never seen anyone who appealed to him more. That's my oldest daughter, Donna, Paul heard Mr. Honeycutt say from behind them, Donna, oh Donna.